Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. I am your host, Zen Sams. Welcome back to Crypto Frontier segment by CCP Digital. And welcoming back to the segment is our regular contributor, CEO of CCP Digital, Chris Pulley. And today he is joined by his good friend, Warren Lawrence, managing partner at Tech Meets Trader. Today we're chatting about blockchain gaming, play to earn models and what the monetization incentives look like for gamers and how to implement a viable economic system into GameFi. But what is GameFi? Well, for those unfamiliar, it's a portmanteau of game and finance. GameFi involves blockchain games that offer economic incentives to the people that play them, otherwise known as play to earn games. And players can typically earn in-game rewards like crypto tokens, virtual land, avatars, and other NFTs by completing tasks, battling other players, or simply progressing through various game levels. Now, unlike traditional video games, play to earn games let you buy and then transfer the in-game assets to outside of the game's virtual world. Now, imagine a world in which you can make money just by playing a video game, not fake in-game money, but the kind of money that helps pay the bills and keeps food on the table. And imagine all the assets in a game, the characters, the outfits, the weapons could be bought and sold in the real world. Well, GameFi is one of the fastest growing segments in the video game industry. While the space is still pretty new, new type of ownership enabled by the industry structure is all the craze. And this is not a pipe dream. It's happening in real time. And here to chat some more are Chris Pulley and Warren Lawrence. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's nice to see you. Yeah, nice to have you on. All right, Warren, I'm going to start with you. So before now, gamers were able to make money from streaming and selling rare collectibles that they acquired within a game. And these collectibles can be pretty expensive depending on the level of how popular the game is. However, the items sold by the gamers are only valuable in that game ecosystem. And this is not the case, though, with play to earn models. In play to earn models, players collect assets worth money outside of the game ecosystem. And this could range from crypto coins to NFTs that collectors can buy in external marketplaces. This makes the play to earn model worthwhile for gamers, drawing in those who would otherwise not spend much time on gaming. Okay, what do you say to this? And is this income paving the way out of poverty, poverty for some of these gamers? Oh, most certainly, Zen. You know, what we're seeing is, is uh, emerging markets really start to take flight into this play to earn uh, economy. And because it's a low barrier to entry, a lot of them you can sign up for free and get started and you know start playing. And so not only is it entertaining and thought provoking because of strategy provoking games, but in, in some you know areas of the world where they're making 20 to $30 a day, that's meaningful in terms of an impact of their lifestyle. So in areas like in the Philippines and um, Thailand and areas such as uh, those, you know, Vietnam, you're seeing huge adoption curves. And of course, it's being brought out towards us Westerners as well um, and in different types of forms. But you're seeing adoption across the entire world for, you know, this type of uh, incentivized uh, gaming experience, whether it be a full metaverse or metaverse, you know, VR world, or if it's, you know, a walk to earn type model, um, you're seeing it throughout the entire industry. Exactly. I mean, just in, if you look at the stats in 2021, the world experienced both the rise and fall of GameFi, right, with popular games, including Decentraland, Sandbox and Axie Infinity, enabling players to earn in a new standard for gameplay. And within the confines of these games, players were allowed to experience true asset ownership for the very first time, as verified by the blockchain earning profits divided among players, regardless of where they were physically located, uh, bringing me into the next point. So Chris, while these games have shaped the profitability of gaming, many are still left you know, questioning if play to earn P2E um, can be more than a marketing gimmick, right? With sustainability plaguing the community, GameFi relies heavily on a continuous stream of outside investments and a dedicated fan base to really propel momentum. Now, unfortunately, both have proven to be short term oriented and in some cases damaging to the ecosystem. Axie tokens tanked as of lately. What do you say to this? 
Um, well, when I hear you ask the question that it takes um, a community of gamers and, and um, influx of capital, um, it, it almost sounds like you're just talking about a traditional video game project uh, as they both require the same. Um, you had mentioned Sandbox. That's one that's close to uh, close to my family as my children are playing Roblox and and um, um, you know, what's the other game? Roblox and, um, and yes. Minecraft. 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 Thank you. And uh, I get the credit card bills. Right. And so they're buying things. They're buying their their tools and, and things to create with. But when they leave that game, the money's left there. The toy, the tools, whatever they built, they're left there. And Sandbox is a great example. It's the same game to me. It looks the same, plays the same to some degree. But you're creating, you're trading amongst each other. Um, you can create new tools, sell them in the marketplace, get sand tokens, and then go to the free market and exchange your sand tokens back out for another token um, or, you know, looking to cash back out to some sort of uh, um, currency. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, but, but listen, this plate, when you're looking at how it's progressing, these play to earn models, it's basically a job, though, outside of the funness, because it's these Axie Infinity, I, I don't feel as fun. You do something and you get rewards. Then people cash out their earnings over and over again. They don't contribute to the community. They're just doing their tasks and getting paid. And a play to earn model is needed where it's fun and rewarding. So people can spend hours and days and months playing and getting better, competing and collaborating and building a really incredible community. So I think there's like a fine line where it's gone gray there as of lately, uh, but that's a different show. All right, Warren, I'll bounce this back to you. Today, uh, GameFi projects lack the scale and infrastructure necessary for mainstream accessibility. And this contributes to high upfront costs and fees and potential network bottlenecks. Furthermore, um, NFTs like the crypto market can be incredibly volatile, right? Their, their value can fluctuate from one hour to the next, making them really risky assets to hold. In the same vein, uh, market observers have warned that the high rate of interest in NFTs can lead to an economic bubble that could burst at any time. What are your thoughts on this? No, I, I completely agree that it could lead to an economic bubble within this space um, because there's a lot of capital inflow, but that's because there's a lot of merits behind the technology. And I would say that overall, there's going to be instances where you have use cases where Axie Infinity is a perfect example of a Petri dish experiment that went pretty well overall, except obviously some plunders. And it doesn't necessarily, who knows, it's, it's going to have sustainability moving forward. Whereas, you know, there's other games such as, let's call it Splinterlands, one that I'm very familiar with, was a really supporter um, in. And, you know, they've grown to millions of users, very similar to Axie, but they're more under the radar. Why is that? And it's mostly because they're insulated. So the ones that are, I would say, playing into the crypto hype, if you will, those types of ecosystems, those ones will rise and fall like every other kind of uh, um, boom and bust cycle, right? But at the end of the day, there's going to be games that emerge as becoming insulated that can be extraordinarily successful um, within their own technology infrastructures and be scalable because they're not doing what everyone else is doing. They're not, you know, um, subjecting themselves to maybe a congested blockchain or something of that nature because they maybe control their own technology. They have their own internal blockchain. Um, so I think that would, I would push the envelope a little bit further in that regard. Yeah, that makes total sense. And Chris, I mean, you're going to be, I'm going to, you're going to love this question because I'm dying to get your thoughts on this when it comes to um, Axie Infinity. So Axie Infinity, uh, Sky Mavis reports that the game has surpassed 2 million daily active users. Great. Now, the majority of players are found in Southeast Asia, 10% in the United States and the remaining 20, 25% across Europe and Africa. Now, there's one particular barrier for Axie Infinity players. You need to buy three Axie characters, which are NFTs, to be able to play the game and earn rewards. But these NFTs are now fetching around $400 each, pricing out many potential players. Now, Chris, this model to me doesn't seem fair and rather offensive to the game. What are your thoughts? That's, that's a great question. And um, it, it just, I, I believe that the uh, they're just facts to be, um, to entered in here. So at one point, I don't know where the Axie Infinity started selling their NFTs at, but it was probably much less uh, um, expensive as they are today. Um, and then I also heard that they got as high as three and four thousand dollars to acquire those NFTs to play the games. But what it also does is it allows a, a economic um, collaboration. 
And so um, uh, actually Warren and I are working on another project, a creator project similar, where the NFTs, even though we, we believe relatively inexpensive at $100 to $200 of Ethereum, can be purchased and then staked and, and basically loaned or lent out to someone that couldn't afford $25, let alone $150 or $400, and, and then share the revenue. So you're able to have a, uh, an economic system where you're working together. And we're, we're working in that model in many instances today to try to bridge the economic gap globally. Yeah, I mean, listen, that and that project, those are the types of projects that the creator economy, this, this economy that's on the rise in the digital world, is giving birth to. And the proper infrastructure is definitely needed. I know that at CCP Digital, you have a portfolio this thick of the most incredible projects at the forefront, forefront of Web 3.0. So I'm always eager to hear your thoughts on things. Uh, we have about three minutes left, and I want to uh, throw this one back to Warren. Um, so Warren, if you really look at at blockchain gaming, right? So the blockchain gaming industry has faced criticism from traditional gamers, and many think that gameplay for these projects has a long way to go, that the next phase of growth might come only after these existing games deliver and the infrastructure evolves further. Now, the tokens of, sev of several play-to-earn games have suffered large price drops this year as broader cryptocurrency markets have trended downwards, leading us to think that maybe they don't trade so independently after all. What do you say to this? You know, I, I would say it's it's a play to earn model and it's not uh, without its risks, right? And so I would say to any, let's say, parent looking at their kids playing these video games, right? Would I rather have them maybe do a strategy game um, that has some sort of economy and earning potential where they're learning real world principles of you know money management, being able to transfer assets, utilize those assets, and maybe earn additional other streams of income. That entire economy is useful skills, right, for this next generation to learn um, independent on their own. And, and so like whether it's Call of Duty where it's kind of deconstructive, where you're in the traditional like gaming world where, you know, if you're either playing a EA sports, a sports game or a shoot em, you know, play to um, peer to peer game, you know, it's less constructive, I would say, than what you're going to see in this uh, play to earn economy. Now, with that being said, you're going to see, of course, you know, new markets uh, become a lot more accessible through the barrier to entry. And I think that's what you, you should be looking for is, is what gaming platform uses crypto and blockchain technology without even the user knowing it. That's what's going to be the most successful. Absolutely. Expert advice right there. Uh, Chris, do you want to pipe in yeah. there? You know, we just keep thinking about play to earn. And, you know, we uh, Warren and I were, were talking about this a couple of years ago and it was so exciting. But what's even more exciting is the play to earn model has spurred the exercise to earn the yes. learn the learn to earn um you you mentioned it earlier warren Steppen is is paying tokens to verify you're walking and how far each day and um you know i've, I've heard some incredible amounts of uh, tokens earned that could be sold for real currency just from going on your daily walk and so th this model and the whole concept and idea is going to continue to transform industries and transform the way um, the next generation basically interacts with global economics. Well said, well said. Well, we're at the end of our time, my friends. Chris, thank you so much. Warren, always a pleasure. Thank you for coming on, my friend. Thank you all for having us. Absolutely. That was our Crypto Frontier segment brought to you by CCP Digital. And just remember, guys, user statistics show the rapid pace of adoption of blockchain gaming and the number of daily unique wallets interacting with game related smart contracts has surged to 1.3 million as of last year. That's a 46 fold increase over the 28,000 at the end of the year 2020. Think about that. And one area of the digital asset industry is ahead of the games with exponential growth is in fact blockchain based gaming. Well, now you've heard it all. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. We'll be right back after this.